Don't get me wrong, the security lady was very polite and very cute. Whoa. Huh? Whoa, what? <laughs> Take us to church. Does the name Creflo Dollar mean anything to you? One option I found is World Changers Church International. Dude, the hour 15 late to church is crazy. This could all fall apart in this moment. Is this a terrible idea? Oh, we're about to get busted. We grew up going to church every week. Same church, every week, no discussion. Now we're hitting the road to find the wildest, most unique, and most interesting churches in the world. My name is John Christ. And I'm Shamam Raymond. And together, we're first time visitors. I mean, I'm in Mississippi working for the weekend and Shama's in South Carolina and he goes, dude, I got a church for us, meet me in Atlanta. Waffle House is kind of the main church in Atlanta, so we have to come here. He gives me this address and I pull up and it's a Waffle House. Oh, we're doing it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I guess if we're in Atlanta, to a lot of people, this is a church. Bro, let your boy work. What is this? <laughs> Hey, dude. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? It's not the best area of town, okay? I, I grew up in Atlanta, but uh, I grew up on the other side. I'm trying to fit in. I said a black church in Atlanta, but... What's up, bro? You dress like white. You're going to white church. <laughs> what do you think about this outfit? I, I dig it, man. I think you're going to fit right in. What are you they doing? They might let you pray. We figured we couldn't experience everything the city had to offer without least starting our Sunday morning off right. Dude, they're gonna think you're the regional manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I need this backdrop cleaned up now. <laughs> Does the name Creflo Dollar mean anything to you? Got where we're on? Yeah. Are we? World Changer Church International. <laughs> yeah, I okay. grew up watching TBN in my house, and every day my dad would watch Creflo Dollar preach on TV. I, I got tertiary knowledge of Creflo Dollar. Like, I'm as far away from Creflo Dollar that if information comes across my feed or my conversations about Creflo Dollar, uh, it's not good. I grew up in Atlanta. I've never been within 20 miles of here. You didn't hoop at that hoop nation way over there? You know what, I didn't, I got cut. I got cut from the basketball team at private school. I have not been to the Hoop Nation in College Park. North Point doesn't have a campus in College Park. Okay, is that fair? Is that fair? I'm, I'm calling Andy. North Point, does <laughs> not, they, got, they have a Buckhead, they have a Athens, they got a Browns Bridge. There's no Bankhead Freeway. North Point Church. I don't know what to expect. Do I look nervous? Look at me. Do I look nervous? No. <clears throat> you know what? Maybe we should always pregame church. Why don't people do this more? <laughs> Be in the pregame church. But if you're going to a white church, you go to like, I don't know, a Denny's. Can't come to the Waffle House in College Park, I'll tell you that. No. Take us to church. One option I found is World Changers Church International on Burdett Road in South Fulton. Nah, that's About where we need to go. World here. Changers is a, uh, that's one of those like, real, that's a really strong term. Oh know? yeah, no, youth camp. Like, youth camp, be like, y'all yeah. are, I see a bunch of world changers. And you're like, dude, I can't order my own food at Taco Bell. I'm like, dude, this kid doesn't know how to <laughs> put on deodorant. We, he might get to World Changers. He might. He might get there. He play, he's in World of Warcraft, <laughs> is what this kid is. I mean, we're on the way to World Changers International, and I'm looking out to my left, and I see a, a abandoned shopping center, and I'm looking out to my right, and I see businesses that are boarded up. I go, dude, change the world. Let's let's <laughs> let's start with a couple blocks around this place. Let's start here. We're gonna drive around real quick. I get the vibe. Cause you you said you've never been to College Park. VIP wigs. Memphis barbecue. No, I've never been to College Park. They would have, how you doing? I was that, asking about a church. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, let's care, we're on the way to church. Okay. You know Creflo Dollar? Yeah. He has a church around here? Uh huh. Where is it? Uh, you get this right lane right here? Yeah. Then you, you pass me by. All right, thank you brother. I didn't say brother like black, guy. I just no, said, brother said brother like, like friend. In general. Look, I'm doing this already. I'm doing like, hey, uh, am I good? Am I good? I'd listen, I'm gonna just be confident. Here's a church's chicken next to a Bojangles. John mentions it because it's odd and he grew up in Atlanta, but he had never actually been to this side of Atlanta, but he's 
here today. <laughs> in my, right next to where I played tennis growing up. What are you laughing at? No, no, no. Right, okay, right where I played tennis growing up. That's right a ag- really white introduction to a sentence. No. <laughs> Fair. Fair. <laughs> We're passing a lot of barbershops, a lot of nail salons, a lot of buildings with no windows. Dang, there's a lot of barber, the barber shop and wings. <laughs> what, dude? I'm just making observations. I mean, you pass enough weave stores and barber shops until you go, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think we're going to a black church. World Changers Church International Yeah, is where we're headed. Not local. The pastor. Not no, regional, no, no. not countywide. I called the yeah. church office. Yeah. And said, hey, all I said was, hey, is Pastor Creflo going to be preaching this Sunday? Yeah. And the secretary or whoever picked up hung up on me. Because she said, Pastor Creflo, dude. It's Pastor Dollar, bro. It's Reverend Honorable Bishop is, Dollar. Is, is Dollar yo. Dollar Bill, y'all? Yo, he's, oh, he's yo, hanging out. His last name is Dollar. That's insane. What are you betting that he's, at, he's preaching today? I don't think he's going to preach today. I think he is. I don't think he's going to be there. You don't think he is? I'm, I, I'm I saying he he's not going to be there. I, I, somebody, I, the Lord, I heard from the Lord. When I lived in L.A., I went to Judah Smith's church. Okay. And the same type of thing happened. If this, quote, celebrity pastor is not there, dude, the air comes out of the room when the other guy comes out. Really? And people leave. Huh? People leave. Huh? Which is crazy. Huh? And that's it. Dude, if you build your church around a celebrity... That's what's gonna happen. So if he's not there on, he's out of town. This is the summer. I guess he might not be there. No. But they have to but keep they that can't a secret. Say. All right, dude. Well, we're going to church. Yes. You know what we gotta do. We gotta read the reviews. One star. Okay. To start off, this church is a house of God, but this is not a very friendly church. I just went because of the name and the closeness to view the church and the facility possible. Walk around, you know, look in the sanctuary and take pictures. But that's not the case. You're not allowed to walk around on the grounds. In fact, I was told that if you do not have a purpose for being there, then you cannot just come in and look around. What? What are we going to do? What? That's what we're doing. Now, I'm a pastor of a pretty good sized church. Okay, I doubt it. Uh, And can't understand having all the security and all that in the house of God. All right. So the... It, there is a, it's a very... It's going to be stacked. We're going in, I, we're not, it's a, it's, they're Christians and we're going to church. Yeah. So it's not, we can go, I mean, I'm dressed appropriately, you're not, but I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong, the security lady was very polite and very cute. Whoa. Huh? Whoa, what? One star, three years ago. It's an okay church, but I personally think it's too long and he just repeats the same thing over and over and over again, but it's a nice church and the environment is good. Here you go. He lives in a luxurious mansion with fancy cars and butlers while half his congregation is poor and can barely afford rent. It's a fashion show for the well-to-do. Ah, <laughs> dude, I'm in. I'm in this okay, church, bro. I miss, if, had I read the reviews. Yeah, you should have read the reviews. I would have had a, I would have had a Steve Harvey hat, dude. Oh, yeah. I would have dressed like Sinbad in the 90s. A fashion show for the well-to-do. That's us. That's me. I mean, we pull up. I, I see a lot of cones. I see a lot of cops and traffic cones. And that's when I know uh, uh, we're in the vicinity. Founding pastors, baby, we out here. As we're pulling into World Changers Church, like we see it. We see the dome. That's that's where it all happens. Oh, look at this, bro. Woo! This happens every time. We get out of the car and we start walking and we go, oh, no. Is this okay? Should we be doing this? Is this a terrible idea? And John and I were both extremely caught off guard when the first thing we see when we walk in the building, they had to get into a church metal detectors. Metal detectors. Now, John and I are both wearing mic packs under under our shirts. And about this time, I'm thinking, oh, we're about to get busted. Dude, if I go through these metal detectors and they like bring me aside and like these mics get exposed, I'm not meeting Creflo. I'm not getting into heaven. This could all kind of fall apart in this moment. But luckily it didn't. The metal detectors didn't detect the mic packs and then we walked through. Uh, the security guard confiscated my wallet and took a hundred bucks before I even got into the sanctuary, which was crazy. I was like, dude, prosperity gospel, I get it. This seems aggressive. Okay, so we walk into this church and they call it the dome. We walk into this gigantic 
sanctuary. Worship kicks off and I'm, I'm starting to feel comfortable because it's songs that I know. They played Reckless Love by Corey Asbury. I was like, dude, the prosperity gospel is the least of your concerns. The theology in this song, I'm just kidding, Corey Asbury is a buddy of ours. This worship leader, man, he was jumping. He was getting people excited. John and I had been, we'd been going back and forth the whole morning, whether or not Creflo Dollar's gonna be there. Is he here? Is he gonna show up? And sure enough, emerged the one and only Creflo Dollar. I mean, I guess I don't know what I expected to happen, but seeing Creflo Dollar walk out in front of that crowd, it's like seeing Michael Jordan come out of the tunnel on game seven of the NBA finals. It was like, it was that, it was that kind of energy. And I, dude, I'll be real. I got swept up in it myself. Pastor CD, Pastor Dollar Dollar Bill, y'all, Pastor Creflo D. Aller walks up to the podium and he starts preaching. So I want to begin in the book of Ephesians chapter four and verse one as we continue to talk about the worthy walk. And I, I mean, I'd say we're, we're an hour in already. I mean, it's, yeah, white people are, hey, what are we doing? We gotta get the kids to tennis practice. By the way, people were still coming in. Like an hour, 15 minutes in, a couple came in front of us and sat down. I looked at Sean, I go, dude, an hour 15 late to church is crazy. I know this blows your mind. I'm already perfect. Now, my living may not look like that, but my stance in God looks exactly like that. Every time we go to a church, the guy walks out, whether you don't know about the denomination or you think they're crazy or they're snake handlers or they're uh, whatever you think about the church we're going to, a man walks out. A man walks out and he's telling some jokes He's talking about his wife, he's talking about his family, and you go, oh, a guy? Guy? Just, a, yeah, it's a guy. Like I said before, I'm tired of waving at people like this. <laughs> One day you're gonna get so tired, you're gonna hurt your wrist, and you're gonna... Pastor Creflo would say something hilarious, and people would be dying and clapping and woo! And John would be like, what does that mean? Ham bone, ham bone, have you heard? <laughs> Ham bone, ham bone, have you heard? We had to Google what ham bone, ham bone was from. And it was like some kind of like hymn or spiritual from like the black church in the past. What would the equivalent would be if like somebody came to my church and the pastor was like, man, some of y'all were out late last night. Some of y'all last night were like, last night we hear the liquor talk. I bet everyone would die laughing. Now we know what that means and that's like typical cultural differences. Only Jesus can help me do that. All I got to do is be willing to submit to the plan. I don't want to love the guy that killed my relative. I want to kill the guy who killed my relative. To be fair to the pastor, I feel like he's kind of come off some of his prosperity gospel teachings. I mean, he, he had a couple good points in there. I'm not going to lie. I got to give it to him. We're not here to critique theology, but most of Creflo's theology, it was on point. Salvation is a gift. Answered prayer is a gift. Your spouse is a gift. Your job is a gift. Everything you got is a gift. But I looked at Shama and I go, dude, there hasn't been any offering. There hasn't been any ask of money yet to this point, which I thought was strange. And sure enough, about right when those words came out of my mouth, um, the ask was given. The ushers start scurrying around like ants and picking up all these buckets and they like hand us a bucket and they hand John an envelope. Buckets, 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 buckets. Then a couple guys would like stack the buckets up as soon as they collect them. And so several guys, like maybe like 20, 20 men and women have these like buckets on buckets on buckets of tithes and offerings. I always wonder like, how do they get all the bills? Like just stacks of bills all consolidated into one. I feel like it's, it was, it was like a, 
a scene from the Righteous Gemstones. Okay, so we're two hours in, and as everyone does that's a first time visitor to a new church, you're going, you're going through the checklist. Worship, we've done it. Meet and greet, we've done it. Communion, we've done it. Sermon, we've done it. And I'm, we're two hours in, so I'm going, all right, this is wrapping up here soon. And Creflo Dollar says, he goes, I'm gonna do something today that I haven't done in three years. But I would like, if you would, to lay hands on you to be healed. Now we're doing this. Now we're two, we're two hours and 15 minutes in. And all of a sudden, people just start pouring to the front, just pouring to the front for healing. I have not seen this in a church in 20 years. It's been, it's been since I was in middle school that I've seen like come to the front for prayer that we're gonna lay hands on you. But that's what it was. He's like, I'm gonna touch you. And when I lay hands on you, you're gonna, like, you, you, something like embrace your healing or something like that. I cast you out, you get out. You don't belong in this body. I was looking at Shama, I go, practically, how's this gonna work? I mean, you're looking at 500 people that are up there and he's saying that he has to individually touch every one of them, which I go, we're trying to get some wings uh, back up our reservation for another hour. When's the last time you've seen this? Like speaking in tongues out loud on a microphone, I go, dude, I have not seen this in forever. We were almost three hours in and I looked at Shama, I go, dude, I'm tapping out, bro. I'm out of gas. And listen, somebody's gonna make a stereotypical joke about black church going long. Um, it did go long. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, world changes. You are amazing. What you think about uh, that? World Changers Church International. Uh, Pastor Creflo was in the building. In the pocket. My man was in the. I haven't seen. I, I looked over at you and I haven't seen uh, a laying hands on and falling over. This has been a minute. I mean, it's been. It's been a minute. A long. I, I, I think I would say probably since I was in middle school. Yeah. When I saw that. And people put, I mean, they had blankets they put over people. They got, yeah, they we, were getting yeah. prayed, the modesty for, blankets. prayed for it on hand and then falling over. Yeah, is that what they're called? I think so. Modesty blankets? Yeah, they don't want no midriff. <laughs> Not, I feel like you can't, the Lord can't save you. Nah, if you nah, have nah. It. Yeah, 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 God yeah. can't heal you. I'll tell you this, uh, the church started at, at 10, <laughs> at 10. And listen, I'm not doing a, like a black church stereotype. No. Am I? No, no, no. No. Am I, am I, am I saying the facts? You are. Okay. Start it is now, it is now 1230, 1234. That's two hours, 34 minutes and no sign of stopping. No. No sign of stopping. No. I mean, we left and I was thinking to myself, I was very confident because I was like, look how far we've come in this season with the Rainbow Church, the Pentecostal Church, the Cowboy Church, now the Black Church. I love doing the show. I love finding these churches. I don't think John's ready for the next church I pick. I'd feel comfortable anywhere. Good, because next week we're going to Honduras. <laughs> Dude, are we? Yeah. Dude. What else do you Spanish? <laughs> nah, I took three years in high school. So it's good? Massa, man.